Hi, thank you for your continued interest in my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at some tricky behaviors with artboards when you're laying out your creative environment in Adobe Illustrator. So I've got the opening dialog screen for Adobe Illustrator here on the desktop. I'm going to click on New, and we're going to take a look at some of the options you have for an artboard here. So in the New Document dialog window, you're given Recent as the first option here. We're going to take a look at this web project that I have here. You'll notice that we can change the name of the project file right here. So I'm just going to save this as artboard. I'm going to leave the width and the height the same right here. We're going to leave the unit measurements in pixels. Uh, orientation is going to be landscape. And because we're in pixels, I'm going to leave the color mode as RGB. So let's go ahead and create this. So you're originally given this single artboard. We didn't tell it to create multiple artboards, which we could have done. So we're going to just create a, a couple of simple shapes. Grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to give it a fill color of red and remove the stroke color here. And I'm going to extend that to the edges of the artboard so that we have kind of a red background here. Now at this point we can create new artboards and to do so is really easy. You have this artboard tool button right here. And when you do that, it shows you an outline of the artboard or artboards that you have on your screen. Now you'll notice that I have one artboard and right here in the corner is the name artboard one. We'll get to the name in just a second. Uh, we're gonna leave it as is, but I will come back to that here shortly. To create a new artboard, you can literally click and drag anywhere on the screen, just like I did for that rectangle tool a minute ago. And now I'm given Artboard 2. So you'll notice up here in the top tool pane, I've got the X and Y coordinates of the artboard. And keep in mind, these coordinates indicate the position of the artboard, not any of the elements on the artboard, because we have the artboard tool selected. Now I wanna be able to see the width and height of the artboard as well. To do that, I need to adjust the width of the Illustrator window here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that out just a little bit, and you'll notice that I can now see the width and height of my artboard. And this is kind of important. You'll notice that I have uh, 12 pixels by 14 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select all of that and change that to an even 20. And we'll do this as an even 20 as well. Now let's say we have uh, an icon to use on the web and it has to be 20 pixels by 20 pixels. Pretty standard icon. I'm going to uh, put in a, let's just do a, a circle here. I'm going to hold down on the rectangle tool and grab the ellipse tool. And I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna hold down Shift and Alt or Option so that I can create this circle from the center and I'm just going to click and drag out. And you'll notice that my guides say that it's 20 pixels by 20 pixels. I'm going to release that. Now I've got a perfect uh, circle in that 20 by 20 artboard. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to export this artboard, just basically this one. I could do this one too, but we're going to look at this one first. So to do that, I'm going to choose File and then Export, Export for Screens. This Export for Screens is a new feature with Adobe Creative Cloud 2017. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to quickly export multiple sizes and formats of your artboards. It allows you to export them as PNGs, JPEGs, PDFs, F SVGs. We're gonna take a look at the PNG format. And the first thing we wanna do is we want to only do Artboard 2. I'm going to deselect Artboard 1 so that I have Artboard 2. And you'll notice that as soon as I did that, the radio button here switched from all to range and then just two. So a couple of different ways you can select the artboard to export right there. Then I want to choose the destination of where the image is going to end up. And we're gonna go ahead and just choose the desktop here. And when I do that, you'll notice that it changes the file path to the desktop. I'm going to leave both the 1x and the 2x versions here. So what this is basically saying is I want one image that is 1x 
meaning the exact size I specified on the artboard, 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And I want another image exported of the same artboard, but I want it to be two times the scale. So instead of 20 by 20, it's going to be 40 by 40. Now I can append a prefix to this. Let's just call this circle. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and click export artboard. And you'll notice now that on my desktop, I've got two circles here, circle artboard two. So you'll notice that it says circle artboard two. We'll come back to that. And then I have circle artboard two at two X. Now here's the tricky thing. Check this out, 21 by 21. That's not what we indicated in the artboard tool. We wanted it 20 by 20. And you'll notice that this one says 41 by 41. So what the heck is going on here? Basically, if we go back to our artboard tool, we click there, you'll notice that I have 16.36 and 85.64 as the location of the artboard. So that top left corner is on a value that is not a whole number. Now because these values of these coordinates are not whole numbers, when the artboard size is at such a small scale, Illustrator has to compensate when exporting that artboard. And to do so, it adds an extra pixel. Now, the reason why this is so important is if you're exporting images for say, iOS development, let's say you're exporting uh, icons for the App Store and iTunes, Xcode is going to reject those images, those icons, when you're trying to import them into the iOS app development bundle in Xcode. So it's very helpful to understand how to get exact dimensions for your artboards when exporting them. Now to do that, what we have to do is we have to change these values to any whole number. And let's just say I'm going to move that 15, so you'll notice that it moved it about a pixel and a half over to the left, and then I'll change this one to just 85, okay? Another thing that we can do is we can take away this name. In fact, I'm just gonna call this circle right here and I'm gonna click away out of that uh, artboard tool. Now I'm going to hit file, export for screens, and then I'm going to deselect artboard one and I'm going to keep the same scales here, just the one and the two X, and I'm going to go ahead and delete the circle prefix here. I'm going to export the artboard and you'll notice that it's creating two new files. It's not overriding the original ones because I changed that artboard name from artboard two to just circle. So I'm going to delete both of those original ones and then let's take a look at circle. Now you'll notice that my dimensions are 20 by 20 and on this one they are 40 by 40. So just a cool little uh, tip here when you are creating multiple artboards and you can really create as many artboards as you need for a project in one uh, file. When creating those artboards, make sure that you know where the artboards reside on the canvas itself. And when at all possible, and it should always be possible, always have the top left reference point land on a whole X value and a whole Y value. I hope you found these tips about the artboard useful and wish you good luck in creating all your awesome projects in Adobe Illustrator. Please subscribe below and look for new videos coming soon.